Welcome to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif, the sort of phase two post-COVID edition. Stay at home if you feel like it. And uh, we're glad to have you uh, joining us today. We have our ever faithful and, and, and famous guest on the show, Mayor Jeff Lehman. Mayor, thank you for joining us from home. Uh, we appreciate having you on the show. Let's get right into it though, Mayor Lehman. Obviously it's been crazy. We haven't had you on the show for several months. And in that time, we're experiencing COVID and we're experiencing numbers from anywhere like 22% of businesses are, are maybe not in business anymore. You've had your hands full, Mayor. Uh, tell us what is the State of the Union in Barrie as we see it today? And what is a municipality able to do in partnership with the feds and the province? I've given you a lot to talk about. We've got a short show. Take it away. Sure. Well, um, let me give you a few things and then we can chat. I mean, um, as we sit here today in late June, uh, the city of Barrie is in phase two. We have done relatively well um, relative to other cities, our size in terms of stopping the spread. So the first thing to say is thank you to everybody who participated in this um, enormous experiment in civic duty and uh, behavioral change over the last three months. We've all had to change virtually every aspect of, of how we live our lives. Um, uh, we've had to go online. We've had to uh, distance from each other. We've had to suspend relationships and uh, social engagements and hobbies and work and so forth. Um, and uh, it's been worth it. We have uh, reduced the, the spread to the point now where uh, in our area, we've moved well into phase two, and we are seeing very low daily case numbers. Uh, our medical officer of health often reminds me that um, we're, the, the virus doesn't go away until there's a vaccine. So it's more about learning to live in a world where the virus exists. Uh, so we're going to have to continue to do things, and we may have to increase the level of restriction and reduce the level of restriction, so-called pumping the brakes, over the second half of 2020 until a vaccine is ready and we reach the end game of, of COVID. Um, obviously the economic damage from the uh, three month shutdown has been substantial. Uh, I would say in some sectors, what we are hearing is it's less than feared. Uh, in others, it's, it's very, very serious. And I think at the moment, the State of the Union, we're probably at a very important month or two for businesses. You know, We had a lot of them say to us, we might be able to shut down, go into cryo sleep for a couple of months, longer than that, and we're toast. And a lot of that depends on commercial landlords because one of the biggest costs you can't get out of, you know, if the federal government is supporting your workforce, which they have done to some extent, or if they're providing credit or liquidity or financial support, which they've done to some extent, your next major cost is your bricks and mortar. And I've heard everything from my landlord hasn't given me an ounce of room to move and I'm now toast. Uh, to landlords that have been incredibly understanding and supportive. Um, I would say in terms of the economy, literally uh, in the last uh, 24 hours, we launched at, at Barry City Council, the economic recovery plan. Uh, that was built with uh, consultation. We had um, uh, six sectors of the economy and of course an economic task force from the beginning of the crisis. We formed that on day three in mid-March. Uh, and that uh, consists of the heads of all of our industry associations in Barrie, Barrie Construction Association, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tourism Barrie, Downtown Barrie, um, and, and others. Uh, and we use that group to try and coordinate the response and then the planning for recovery uh, initiatives. The reality of the municipality, a little more State of the Union, um, we're down about $20 million in revenue. That's the forecast um, to be the hit from COVID. So we know that the municipalities, towns and cities across the country are not the ones with a pile of capital. In fact, we have our own financial challenges similar to many of these businesses. So, you know, our support is much more around what can we organize locally to help our business community come back. For me, that's about three C's, capital, confidence and capacity. The capital is largely going to come from the financial sector and the federal government. Uh, the, the capacity and the confidence you can build a little bit more locally. Capacity is everything from the Patios Everywhere program, which literally creates outdoor capacity for businesses to distance. Um, and we're looking through the recovery plan at actually allowing some businesses to operate in parks and public spaces to take that principle and go further. Just allow public space to be temporarily used for commerce to create distancing. Another great example of that is the Berry Farmers Market, which is now back in business. Um, but capacity is more than that. It's online capacity. 
um, and, and, and its confidence. And the confidence comes from trying to put those protective measures in place so that um, customers can feel safe doing business. Again, walking into a store or participating in an organized activity or whatever that might be. We can't solve all these problems, but we can be part of it. And, and I think our plan, um, which has about 40 specific actions, uh, is intended to try and assist with that. And, and we've had tremendous help with that. And that's maybe the last thing I should say. We've had tremendous help with that from the partner organizations. So if I can say something about the collaboration in this town, um, a lot of the infrastructure by which I mean the, the relationships, the working relationships that were built between the sandbox, the chamber, uh, the Henry Burnick Center, Georgian College, and the city of Barrie, those four as sort of public sector or at least quasi-public support organizations to the industry associations themselves. Uh, that interrelationship has created a framework and an infrastructure for us to help build a recovery. Uh, again, we can't be all things to all people, and I'm sure there are areas where uh, we will not uh, yet get it right, but there have been some really uh, uh, positive steps already taken. Um, and uh, I mean, without going into all of them, I would say they really surround trying to create those three C's or, or expand the availability of those sort of three critical components to recovery. So, Mayor Lehman, I got to tell you, if I ever need someone to come in and fill, you got the job. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, I mean, you've taken really the, the, the bulk of this, this uh, segment really to give us a real good look. I mean, it's been a, it's been a hard three months, uh, so many different moving parts. I want to go to break so that we have uh, as much time in the second and third segment to really dive deep into some of those elements. As you know, we're a show about hitting home and the real estate and, and, and the financial markets, et cetera. But everything that you're talking about really uh, leads up to that capacity, that confidence and that collaboration that homeowners as well as business owners uh, have working with us, living with us right here in, in the Barrie and Simcoe area. So Simcoe County area. So. We're going to go to break real quick. When we come back, Mike, I'm going to let you open your mouth for the first time on the show today. But thank you very much, Mayor Jeff Lehman, Mayor of Barry. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll be right back on Rogers TV Barry. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RF. And uh, this week, we're, we're thrilled to have Mayor Jeff Lehman, Mayor of Barrie. Uh, Mayor Lehman, thanks for, for joining us. You, in the first segment, gave us a really thorough uh, uh, State of the Union, an idea of, of, you know, obviously the compassion and the empathy for obviously where the business community is, as well as our residents, as well as, you know, truly, we should mention, uh, obviously, city employees have had to uh, take a bit on the chin as well and, and during this during this time. But now it's about working with partners in the community and partners in the industry to really help rebound the economy and, and develop what does reality 2.0 look like. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. Our show, as you know, though, is about land use planning, about real estate, about finance, et cetera. So let's get into some of that. And I know at council, you uh, are, are dealing with a brand new proposal, for example, from smart centers. Mike, I know you had some questions on that. Why don't you uh, get into that with us? Well, smart smart centers, because it's fresh in everybody's mind if they've been watching council, it's been recently talked about. And it is uh, uh, on a scale that we haven't seen here for Barry for residential development, multi-residential. Uh, but last time we had you on the show, Mr. Mayor, we, uh, we did talk about some of the proposals that were coming forward. So I'll start it out with the question, uh, has COVID changed uh, some of the plans of some of the developers uh, going forward? Or, or are we still on track to see some of the developments coming forward that have been in the news, have been talked about? Yeah. So one of the things I did about a, a month into the pandemic was uh, to call all of the uh, major developers and investors that um, had a proposal somewhere in the in the queue uh, to see what the status of their project was, just to say that their investment was important and we wanted to uh, know how they were doing and, and understand what the uh, climate was. Uh, to my amazement, um, not one said that they were even slowing down. Um, the only uh, the only thing I heard on a on a slowdown side at all was that, uh, in the first month that there had been such turmoil in the financial markets, there was a little bit of freezing up of credit, uh, and some of them had to provide a pile of additional documentation. Uh, but then that seemed to loosen up even after four to six weeks, because 
uh, the provincial government allowed construction to proceed. So uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, all of my conversations with the in, uh, the development community, the senior investors or, or otherwise, even some of the financiers, is that everything is a, is a go. Uh, and everything, of course, right now for Barry is enormous. Um, Smart Center is probably the largest of them, but uh, there are more than 20 high-rise towers uh, proposed um, within the central core of the city of Barrie at mm -hmm. the moment, uh, and uh, one that is moving into construction in the next month. So, so something that's right already at the moment. Pardon Sorry, me, Mike? Right. I said there's one that's a, at least one that's shovel ready uh, in the downtown. Uh, which one would that be? I'm curious. Yeah, that's the the Lack House. Um, so they've uh, already done a little bit of work on their site and uh, and are about ready to get started on construction. Mm -hmm. Now the um, there's a, a whole series of projects uh, across the downtown, of course, that are um, already at some stage of approval. Um, the mm -hmm. ones that are are ready to go are only a few, though. Our largest developments um, are in uh, in the approval process, and of course. Smart yeah. Centers is one hip on the very central lands uh, is the second one. And then the third mm -hmm. uh, is the development on the uh, theater block between Maple and Mary on Dunlop. So right. I and think it's fair to, is, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, o over your last two terms and you're now into your third term of council, obviously this has been something that you've been really advocating for, obviously in, in conjunction with Places to Grow, which I think has a new name, but um, bot bottom line is we've been trying to get some density into the downtown core so that it doesn't, you know, so the side docks don't roll up after five o'clock and, mm -hmm. and, and people who say it's just nightclubs or just this, you know, so that we get that good healthy mix. mix. Obviously people are looking for grocery stores downtown. They want a reason to live and, and, and participate downtown. So I think it's great that you've got 20 applications that you're looking at. One of the things though that I've noticed over the last couple of years is that those who operate larger big box centers or shopping malls have been saying, we see a shift in the way our future will be and more along a mix of residential over the retail storefront. And, and are yeah. we still on track to see that? Yeah, well, Smart Centers is probably the obvious example. So that uh, Smart Centers is a REIT shifting very quickly into a very substantial high-rise residential development. Uh, and uh, I don't think anyone would be surprised to hear them say that they're perhaps the demand for big box retail going forward is going to be heavily impacted by online shopping and COVID has only made that happen faster. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, do you think uh, one of the challenges for city council always with these development proposals is finding that ground where the existing residents uh, are happy with, with the plan and the developers can work with uh, those demands? Um, do you think there's a middle ground for this Smart Center Greenland project that can be reached? Yeah, it's a great question, Mike. I mean, the the site, the Smart Center site is probably, in my opinion, the maybe the single best site for density in the whole of the city. The reason yeah. for that is Bradford Street has all kinds of capacity from a vehicular point of view. It's not Maple View or Bayfield or even Dunlop. Um, the uh, Bradford Street frontage could really use it. I mean, anybody driving Bradford Street right now will know it is badly in need of redevelopment. There's vacant sites. There's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of opportunity there. And, you know, to be frank, if you put a whole bunch of density uh, on that spot on Bradford Street, you're not blocking anyone's views of the waterfront. The key no. piece there is the interaction with the condos on the waterfront side of the development. So along Lakeshore, you've got four buildings already, and this is in the mm -hmm. gap between them. The design and the impact on those buildings is the key design consideration. And Smart Centers is going to need to make a few changes to the lakefront side of their proposal. Uh, right. to address their impact on the neighborhood residents and also the impact on the public space in the waterfront. Let's not forget, four very tall buildings are going to cast a heck of a lot of shadow, and it is a very heavily used public waterfront where people value the sunshine. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we have to be a little careful with the design of those sorts of things mm -hmm. such that the development doesn't end up um, uh, impacting our, our waterfront in a, to, to such a degree that we lose one of the jewels of our city. But I mean, the scale of their investment is larger than all of the investment along the lakeshore combined in the past. Wow. So uh, I think what we are talking about here is uh, a degree of confidence in the Barry market that we've, we've, we haven't seen before. 
So I just got just before we had to break real quick question, though, because I think uh, if we were to leave that we'd leave our audience hanging with a very daunting question of does council and staff have the tools in place to ensure uh, and please touch on shadow studies that we don't have that, you know, mm. ha have these buildings ruin the uh, experience for those who are enjoying the waterfront. Yeah. Uh, of course we do. We do have the planning controls to be able to do that. But I think one of the challenges always in exercising them is you want to encourage investment um, and and balance that with the need to uh, require um, design considerations that that respect the uh, environment that the, the buildings are going into. So it's always, as you know, a, a balancing act with this one because the scale is so much greater, uh, it's going to be that much more important. But again, the relationship to the waterfront um, you know, the density here is back by Bradford Street, the highest density. There's a big, big building proposed for Lakeshore, but the design of that one building and its podium will be the most important design consideration, I think, for the whole of the development. Well, perfect. I think we're going to look forward to seeing how that rolls out over the next few months. Uh, and obviously, people will be paying attention. It doesn't matter what ward you live in in the city, you're going to be watching and protecting your waterfront as a resident, I'm sure. we got to go to break. When we come back, we want to touch on some land use planning. want to play, uh, not play, but share with some thoughts with you of what uh, Ray Duhamel, uh, one of our uh, most uh, foremost planners in the city, has shared with us in terms of his forecast for development in the annexation lands. And uh, so I'm, we're going to put you on the spot and what your thoughts are going forward over the next few years. Stick with us on Rogers TV, Barry. We'll be right back after this break. Back to hitting home with Mike and RF Mayor Jeff. Uh, we've been talking about uh, different proposals coming forward, but before I took us to break, we had recently on our show Ray Duhamel from Jones Consulting. As you know, he's a planner. He speaks often in front of council. He's got a good finger on the pulse uh, of, of what's going on. And one of the questions that came up is, you know, are we going to see much change in in terms of land use or future development? And his thoughts, in a nutshell, were really this. As we are proving because of COVID that we can telecommute or we can work from home, we may not see uh, necessarily the footprint of residential housing uh, and accommodations change, but we may see the layout change. So more, uh, you know, one bedroom plus office or three bedrooms plus office or whatever it may be. His concern was though, that it may be harder to build out and fill uh, the commercial space or the industrial space, certainly in the secondary plan lands. What are your thoughts? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, well, I think on the residential side, um, overall cities like Barrie will probably end up strengthening uh, in terms of the demand um, because of COVID. If there is an impact on people's buying choices or around communities and built form due to COVID, it's probably gonna to be to strengthen the market for lower density and strengthen the market for uh, smaller cities and medium cities with uh, a quality of life and a lower cost of housing. So I, I actually think overall, it's gonna be very positive on that part of the market. For industrial and commercial, it's a great question. I do think commercial space is gonna take a hit. There's no question. I think some businesses are gonna struggle, but that's the sort of recessionary impact that's cyclical. The structural piece is, um, uh, uh, the shift to online shopping. I think we are going to see a shift in the retail landscape, um, and that could mean less demand for commercial big box. Industrial right now is holding up really strong, and uh, I think in Barrie, we were just seeing industrial rents start to rise because of the strength of demand for industrial space in Barrie. Uh, hopefully, that will actually continue because that's obviously a value-added part of our economy that we want to continue to grow. Right. If I can take us in a, a different direction here for a moment and kind of tie it in with what you said about uh, online shopping is going to be a major influence on our big box and our mom and pop shop stores. Dunlop Street for the last two years, the better part of it has been, uh, various parts of it have been closed down for construction. So we've kind of proven to ourselves that the traffic can still flow and flow well in the downtown port without Dunlop Street which leads me to want to ask, uh, is it worth revisiting? And I think you, you may have mentioned that uh, this was something that was touched on recently in council, uh, turning it into a, like a walkable, close down the downtown, just to pedestrian only. Maybe you can touch on that for a moment. 
Sure. Well, I know it feels like two years, but it's actually only been nine months. Construction started oh, in right? August, yeah, August of 2019. I know a lot of people downtown think it's been going forever too. It's only oh. been nine months and we've actually hurried up the project because of COVID. Our contractor came to us and said, let's try and get as much of this done during the shutdown right. that we can. And they made tremendous progress. So um, I think on the, uh, the pedestrianization issue, it's been, it's been really interesting. Lots of support for that in the community, vocal support. The merchants are not as uh, clearly in favor. In fact, half are opposed. And some very significant ones in the stretch that mm. we were proposing to pedestrianize from Mulcaster to Five Points were saying, please don't do this. It will be the yeah. last nail in our coffin. And yet it's um, been so successful in some communities. Well, it's, it's such a mix though, Mike. I mean, Spark Street in Ottawa is the only street downtown with major retail vacancies in the storefronts. And, and the challenge with pedestrianization mm -hmm. in Canada is it's great for four months of the year. It's okay yeah. for another two or three, and it's a disaster for the other six. That's yeah. why we did the design that we did. The larger sidewalks with the movable bollards allow us to have a wide pedestrianized realm right. for all of the summer with the big patios and the big sidewalks, and it's a much more human environment, mm -hmm. uh, less machine space, more people space. But then you can move those bollards in to create the additional convenient yeah. parking, which helps to encourage customers for the Christmas rush and through the winter. The merchants ultimately decided, uh, although we still haven't had a clear um, a resolution from the BIA board, but, but the interest seems to be in, in pedestrianizing on weekends uh, and oh. working with organizations like the farmer's market to try and help push people into and, uh, and through the downtown. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is high stakes though. It's important that we get this right because there are many businesses down here that have really suffered during COVID. I wanna grab, sure. we've just got another couple of seconds and we're probably gonna need you back uh, sooner than you thought, uh, but why don't you touch on the city of Barrie's relationship with digital Main Street and Google and, mm -hmm. and how that may or may not help or supplement. Yeah. So in 30 seconds or less, uh, we are trying to help small businesses in our uh, community downtown or elsewhere get online and do more business online. We have this incredible partnership now uh, through the Digital Main Street program, uh, which includes uh, Google, Microsoft and MasterCard. And this is a, a national initiative. <laughs> don't, don't rush, keep going. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the opportunity really there to build the bandwidth and online capacity for sales. And we're targeting especially those small businesses and independently owned businesses who can't rely on their broader organization to create that capacity. It really has to come uh, from the grassroots. So that was something that we actually started ramping up in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, and now with the partnership um, uh, with, um, uh, with those two much larger organizations, obviously, you know, there's the, the, the capacity to build this for, for many of our local businesses. Is, is this totally new or has this been uh, tried in other municipalities? Yeah, I know that. Well, the, 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 um, the Google Microsoft MasterCard partnership is national and uh, right. you sign up for it as a local community and then partner using your business support organizations. Um, there's also a tremendous initiative out of, out of Kitchener Waterloo, which was actually built on their local platform, uh, Shopify Ready. And it is, uh, they won a competition that the Burnick Center held among 11 platforms to create a local market. So what we've got, we've got additional capacity to help businesses get online on their own sites. And then there's going to be an online local marketplace uh, that businesses can participate in as well. So uh, those digital initiatives are, are really designed at that capacity building piece that I talked about earlier. So Mary, we're about to leave the show for this day, but uh, give me three, three quick things that you think the audience or, or residents should be keeping an eye on for the next six months. What are the three things you're focused on? Yeah, so remember, we're going to have to live with the virus. We can't assume we've defeated it and it's gone. It's not. It is likely to stay around and we are going to have to keep following at least some degree of changes to our behavior and, and our success in that, our ability to stay open is going to depend on us continuing to do that. So that's message one. Message two, our economy is doing pretty well um, um, managing through the difficulties, uh, but it's going to be, uh, we are going to lose businesses. We have lost a few already and there are many people out there that um, need some help. So look out for one another. Uh, please continue to support our organizations in Barrie that support the less fortunate and organizations like the Food Bank and so forth. Uh, and then the third thing I would say is really look for trusted sources of information right now. There are There's so much bad information out there from outright fake news to conspiracy theories. Please, please, please do not get your information about COVID-19 or the economy from Facebook. Please get it from trusted sources. 
uh, and a little critical reading will go a long way uh, in helping us all uh, work together to be successful in the recovery. And we are out of here. Mayor Lehman, joining us. We appreciate it. See you again on Hitting Home with Mike and Ara. Thanks, folks.